Yeah. Yeah, it's more difficult. Yeah, well, you're worried about getting on and off pit road, which is which is okay. That's really not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is, is you don't you don't get a chance to experiment. Let's say, you know, if if a car a car race has you know a few more cautions or kind of a normal amount of cautions, then you won't be afraid to oh, let's try you know put some wedge in it and change the tire pressure. Well, when it runs green for four cycles in a row, you know, if you're off a little bit, you can get lapped or you know, lose a lot of position in a hurry. So, you know, you have to be much more executed on the decision you make, you know, because the, the chance to undo it if it's the wrong way normally is about 70 laps later when you're out of gas. You get to come back and try it again. So, yeah, under that scenario, it doesn't, uh, it's not, not as easy. Rick, uh, Don Coble with the Florida Times Union. In two weeks, we go to Martinsville, the smallest track and the slowest track. Why does it create such a big challenge for everybody? Well, I, I think that's the that is the challenge. The smallest racetrack is probably the biggest thing. So, when you take 43 cars and there's really one lane that that makes the fastest way around the route, uh, it's hard for everybody to get in that same lane and make things happen. You know. And uh, that, that's, the bit, that's really the biggest thing about it is, is it's, you know, it's small. There's the, the, the bottom is the fastest way around it because it's so flat. It doesn't provide any banking, so you can't really effectively run the top much faster. You know, if it had a little bit of a progressive bank, the top might be a little bit faster where you could kind of run up and down the racetrack. So that's really the biggest thing is you're trying to put, you know, so many cars in a circle on, in one lane around the bottom of the racetrack and and uh you know that that's what makes it so hard you know just makes it really really difficult and um you know you get bottled up from the guy in front of you the guy behind you can get the gas down and turn underneath you sticks you on the outside even though you got a good car you just got checked up a little bit because the guys up there playing a little bumper cars and all of a sudden you get shuffled to the outside and you can lose 15 spots before you can you know get back in line so you know, it's uh, it's kind of a gamble. Brian Nelson, MRN Radio. With uh, the way the chase is playing out, those nine guys within 101 points, and then the same guy, uh, once again, that's been up at the top for the last four years is up there again. How do you, as a competitor, train your focus on what you've got to do, race in and race out, and not let that 48 be a distraction when... You know, it, it, by all appearances, looks like here we go again. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's pretty easy for me because the way I look at it is, is I worry about the 16 car and, with the, and get the best finish I can here at California. So I got to beat Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch, uh, Martin Truex. You know, I got to beat all those guys and Jimmy Johnson and all the rest. And it really makes no difference who I'm racing for the lead or who I'm racing for fifth, what car it is. You know, so what he does, I, can, I don't have any control over. So I focus on getting the best finish and not making any mistakes, Get, you know, whether it's sixth or whether it's third or whether it's a, a win this weekend. Do the best I can. Like last weekend, when I finished the race at Kansas, I had no idea, and I still don't today, who finished third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I guess it's bad of me. I've been so busy this week. I haven't looked at the rundown, the finishing order, and I didn't know Jimmy finished second until I was in the media center, and somebody said, well, what do you think about the 48 getting second? I had no idea where he finished. I didn't see him all day. I didn't see him one time. And uh, the guys later told me that he was running in the teens with about 20 or 30 or 50, lap, 40 laps to go or something like that. And uh, they had made some adjustments, got better, and whizzed their way up to the front, so or, or to the second place. So, you know, just that's a perfect example of paying attention to what we we've got to do and do the best we can. I can't control what they they do. Unfortunately, they got all the way back to second. You know, but uh, you know, we'll just see. Hopefully, they uh, they're off a little bit one of these days or one of these races, and we can gain some points on them. A quick follow-up, you know, it's been said that Martinsville and Talladega are the two wild cards in the chase. Which one to you is more aggravating? Which one is the one that you leave and you're just totally frustrated? Well, probably Martinsville because, 
you know, there is, it, is so little room to race and so little, you know, that you can do um, on, on that racetrack. And we predominantly, as a company and as a team, haven't ran as good at Martinsville as we would like to. So with that being said, I, I mean, my vote is Martinsville is probably the nemesis more than, than Talladega because we've won restrictor plate races and, you know, you got some more room to try and get things done and draft and pick a lane and, and uh, do those kinds of things. So although we did get 10th you know, in the spring at Martinsville, uh, finished in the top 10, so we can go back there in the fall and, you know, do that or better that by a little bit. You know, I think that we'll be good. And Talladega, you know, just like everybody else, I'm uh, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm not – I don't let it affect, you know, that we could get caught up in a wreck or that somebody else could go in there, run the race. When they throw the checkered flag, look where everybody finished and head to the next one. Anything else for Greg Biffle? Okay, Greg, thank Thanks. you.